today's talk was uh, really about how the schools fit into the overall economic development of a country and additionally how we can improve the quality of schools. Over the last 15 or 20 years, we've just learned an enormous amount about both the impact of schools and how we can improve them. And the things we've learned are really quite astounding. We have found that higher quality schooling leads to a better workforce and leads to much stronger economic growth over the long run. So the future of the Spanish economy is going to be highly dependent upon the quality of its workers in the future, and that depends upon performance in schools. Now the part that surprises many people is that the quality of the workforce is also quite well measured by the international assessments we have of students in math and science, so that countries where the students do better on the PISA test also tend to grow faster. The differences between higher growth and lower growth are really quite large. Spain has been suffering from problems of high unemployment and short-run growth, but over the long run, the way countries develop depends upon the overall growth rate. In this, if Spain could get 25 more points on PISA, which is essentially equivalent to bringing it up to the level of Iceland, not anything that's very special, Spain could get added growth over the next 80 years for its economy of over 3 trillion euros, or a, over 6% higher average uh, GDP than it will have without that improvement. Now actually improving the schools is a difficult matter uh, because we can't just put more resources in. Lots of uh, evidence suggests that just putting more funding in the schools and not changing anything else leads to no gains in improvement. What the research has shown is something that doesn't surprise too many people. It shows that teacher quality is, in fact, the central issue. And that's the import, most important attribute of schools. At the same time, teacher quality is not very well measured by how many degrees a teacher has or how much experience they have or whether they have all the traditional credentials it turns out that some people are just much more effective in the classroom than others. And for this, we measure effectiveness by whether students are learning more. And in the United States and now in a number of other countries, we've been able to track the learning of students in different classes. And we find out that, again, some teachers just get a lot more learning every year than others. Now, to the economist, uh, we can't just declare that we need good teachers. We have to put in place systems that will provide incentives for schools to hire better teachers and to keep good teachers. The, the incentives that have shown up in looking across countries and within countries from the research are that having a good measure of performance, having tests that measure student performance are absolutely essential. So you have to be able to judge whether students are doing better or not. Putting in place an accountability system that's related to student performance also leads to better performance. Thirdly, providing more local decision making in schools, more local autonomy helps performance, particularly if it's done in conjunction with an accountability system. It turns out you don't want to just tell schools, do whatever you want. You want to tell them to make decisions, educational decisions on your own, but we're going to assess your performance on the basis of whether the students are learning or not. Fourth, we 
uh, international evidence suggests having more choice among schools so that parents have a choice of which school their children can go to is beneficial. And then fifth, in terms of this, um, we, we know that rewarding schools and teachers that do better and not rewarding those that do poorly is important. That shows up in the international evidence. In fact, um, if the U.S. evidence about teacher quality and the variations in teacher effectiveness uh, held for Spain, we could find that uh, Spain could get and surpass the level of Iceland that we talked about before in terms of affecting growth by replacing the bottom 3 to 5 percent of its teachers with an average teacher. In other words, if we took the 3 or 5 percent of the least effective teachers and put in an average teacher instead of that, past evidence suggests that Spanish children could be achieving at a level of at least Iceland or higher. In other words, more than 25 points on PISA test. So to me, what the research suggests very clearly is that moving in directions that provide better incentives in schools and that provide better accountability for the schools has huge rewards for the Spanish economy. It really determines what the future of Spain will look like.